Hey guys, I'd like to thank you for being with us tonight. This is Marshall Tactical Defense. Tonight we're going to discuss church security. We have a playlist uh, that we're developing now, a series, uh, to kind of walk you through building a team, all the way through running it, and as well as the tactics. Um, I have so, or some of our team members here tonight, just like to have a kind of a conversation and uh, introduce them to you and also share our experiences and it's also what it's like to serve on a team. Uh, to the enemy here we have Don. He helps us with our intelligence. Uh, he's been with the team for a couple of years. Uh, next is Abel. He was actually uh, our new instructor for the channel. Uh, he was a martial arts instructor for the Marines. Been a great wealth of knowledge. Uh, we'll look into a lot with him uh, on the training side of that. Uh, we have Nathan, who's a commander of operations. Uh, he's really the really the driving force, helping with the scheduling, uh, the formation from an advisory point of view, and just kind of the daily weekly operations of the team. So he's been a, been a great help. Joey, he comes to us from the military, uh, basically has a lot of uh, counter, some special counterterrorism training. He's been really great with helping us analyze threats and how we prepare for uh, a potential terrorist attack. And we have John T. He's a fairly new member of the team. He's been a great serving every week with us, really just helping us. He has some uh, self-defense training uh, to leverage and, and just been a, been a real good spirit of guide to, to help us out. One of the things that I've noticed, uh, there's a, with all the rising terrorist attacks, people are finally starting to see the need to have a team um, just to, pre to prepare, but the issue is that either they don't have somebody that's qualified or has the, the confidence to be a leader and grow the team and, and minister it. So the, the desire is there. So hopefully with this channel in this series, it can give you guys some tools and some help with some of the training aspects that's so hard uh, and can be very costly if you have that outsource. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight, try to get a little more in detail about why we have a team and hopefully give you guys some encouragement to start your own. So a lot of people wonder, do we really need to have a team? Is it really necessary? Guys, what do you think? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No. We've had too many events that we just proved useful and we mitigated situations that could have been far worse. So we we have justified our, our presence. Mm -hmm. um, especially being a open campus like our church, our our property, um, it's it's vital that we have a a church security team. And you know, having an open campus like that, and all the activities that that go on, it, it's. It's um it's vital for our for our church and community. Yeah, along with the open campus, you also have our our, <clears throat> our geographic location with regards to um, being in a at least for us in a, in a larger city, and literally just a couple hundred yards away, you have access to a freeway. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the aspect with uh, um, with somebody getting on our campus, possibly committing some sort of uh, offense, and then having a, a way to get out of here rapidly. Right. and then access to other even bigger um, avenues to get out of the city um, mm -hmm. are very important. Yeah. You know, a, lot, a lot of churches don't think about the idea of something happening at their church because nothing ever happens at a church until it does. And having a safety team could be the difference between you going to a boring church or your church being known on the national news for a particular incident. And so if you put that safety team in place, you know how to deal with it, you know how to foresee it and prevent it. So it can also help the church actually save, you know, on liability. Yes. Right? If so yeah, something yeah. happens. Yep. So what kind of services do you think we have the team offers at the parish or the church? Is there any other ways we can help out besides just doing security? Well, yeah, I mean, we uh, hospitality, I and mean, it's a big one. I mean, just, just, uh, just seeing the, uh, you know the uniform guys um, with their with their earpiece. People will tend to go and ask them questions because they know, hey, there's somebody there that has to know something about the, the church or what's going on. And they and I've had that happen a couple times. They come ask me things about, you know, receiving the host or, or, or things like of that nature or mass times. Just simple things, and you can lead them in the right direction. You know, that's, that's but that's one thing. Being present is helping the community itself. Okay. And yeah, the peace of mind that it provides to a lot of parishioners, they'll come up to you and they'll, they'll, they'll thank you and they'll say that they were able to focus that much more in their worship 
because they knew that they didn't have to worry about the external threats to their safety because they knew that we were out there. I also think it also, <clears throat> this is very important, is the, uh, as well as, as piggybacking out off of that, is that we give people a way to speak up if they see something. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there's many of us, we, we're all different sorts of different nationalities and creeds, and uh, so they can literally approach any one of us and they go, hey, I saw this, or hey, I saw that, or you know, this was this seemed kind of out of order today, and they bring that to our attention. And these are things sometimes that even we miss. Uh, we can only be so many different places at different times, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's that. I think has been key is that we are giving our parishioners many different avenues to say something yeah. um, if they see something. Yeah, because we're very accessible. Yes, because quite often you know the head head priest or head pastor or whatever might be at your church, he's a very busy person. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people demanding his attention, mm -hmm. demanding his time, whereas you're there and they know that you're you're there to ensure their safety and they feel comfortable approaching something, you know, with to you. And uh, yeah, and uh, we, we've had a lot of people uh, say that they feel very comfortable bringing something to our attention and they're, they're glad that that accessibility is there for them. One thing you notice when you start serving on a team is that it's not just security issues you have to deal with. Uh, a lot of times it's medical, and that's probably the most common thing. And we haven't dealt with anything too serious yet, but one of the common things a lot of church experiences is people fainting or there's a diabetic um, seizure or just even a general seizure. It's some common things you have to deal with. So you should have some level of training. Um, what do you guys feel, feel like uh, is teams should address in their training program. Definitely want to have the basic CPR knowledge, um, choking, um, Heimlich maneuvers, uh, definitely want to have that stuff down. And then uh, um, maybe some more advanced training. I know, um, I know with Don, you've done the CERT training? or is it I've done CERT, CERT training and I'm also a CNA. So uh, when, when the experience I remember at, a different, at another church was that an elderly person had fallen somebody had grabbed her to try to help her and they grabbed her and pulled her up by the arm well that's the worst thing you could do for a person that's fallen but also, particularly an elderly person you can just locate their shoulder so us having that training of knowing you know keep a person down until they're they assess their injuries and laying them up those those little things can make a big difference in making something mm -hmm. yeah. small and keep it from not getting worse yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and even if uh, you're not first aid certified and uh, you're not a medical expert, having the safety team there, keeping the situation calm and orderly until first responders can arrive can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping people away, uh, having the person be comfortable, and just, just, just crowd control. Yeah, yeah stopping panic. Stopping panic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge impact on that individual. And it's, uh, it's very much worth it, just having that modicum of order uh, projected onto the situation. And even the team can actually help direct the first responders to wherever the incident is as well, mm -hmm. if they don't know that your campus layout. Guys, it, it, serving on a team, uh, not all of us are licensed peace officers, so is this something that the average Joe can do to serve on a team like this? Absolutely. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, that's one of our things as being men is we are we are we're called to be protectors. You know, we're called to uh, um, if things happen, we have a duty and obligation to protect um, obviously our families, but also the people around them. Um, and uh, so, you can always. I think you can you can put together a team and. Mm -hmm. And learn the basics. There's so many resources out there where you can learn basics with as far as you know takedowns. Um, um, <clears throat> depending on what state you live in, if there's you know, uh, you know firearms, you know you could uh, train in, in that aspect as well. You know tap into uh, your congregation. There's a lot of military veterans that are transitioning out of the military, and uh, some of them might be lost and looking for that 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 sense of duty, yeah. and uh, that that could uh, be the heart of the team right there. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's a great way to share your knowledge and experience mm -hmm. in serving our Lord in that capacity. I will caution you, though, to check your local state's laws on regarding serving on a volunteer security team. <clears throat> One of the most common things a team will deal with is suspicious people. Uh, the guys will give you a little flavor on what, what we look for and how we handle that on our approach. 
Uh, so the first thing uh, for suspicious people is you, you're, you're going to get to, as a security team, uh, or even just being a parishioner or in the congregation, you're going to know um, who is, who's there, who doesn't belong there based on their actions, especially during your service, right, if they're not familiar. And suspicious people doesn't mean bad guys. Suspicious people just mean somebody that's not familiar. Um, and approaching this first thing is just get intel, right? So you just want to assess the situation. Um, and after that, you, you, you proceed to maybe engage a person in a conversation. Any other thoughts on that? I think one of the most surprising things when you start a safety team is that you go into it expecting all of your threats to be external. And you end up dealing with a lot more domestic situations than you could have possibly foreseen. So you have to be prepared for that, that a lot of times a lot of the problems are things that come from your own community. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to train yourself <coughs> to be able to deal with people that you may actually know. Mm -hmm. You may know them on a personal level. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're seeing a, a side of your community that uh, you didn't you didn't know about before so you know being well trained for that uh, being professional and dealing with that is very important because a lot of times these threats don't come from where you think they're going to come from yeah that's a good point it's, it's also something to keep in mind that you need to have a level of confidentiality when you're dealing especially with internal uh, mm -hmm. situations that you're dealing with it's very very important that you can trust each other because you don't want certain information getting out I, I think one thing I've heard from people who go to church where there's not something like what we have is that they think that there's not all these incidents going on mm -hmm. but if you think about it and you look back like oh yeah there was a lot of gossip about this or there was some rumor about that and then you start looking at body language or or how a person's acting both the victim and maybe somebody who's harassing him you start to go okay no this is actually very common a lot of these things are happening but people didn't think they had anyone to go to and that's the advantage of us having a safety team is, mm -hmm. is if they have a domestic situation mm -hmm. they they feel safe at the church now they got somebody to go to because sometimes you know the temptation may be to go to the priest but it's hard to get to the priest i mean if there's if they figure on a sunday but if you've got a safety team you've got a lot of people to go to that's mm -hmm. something that we offer uh that, that i think that that is actually a great blessing for us um, and as far as you know, people that we don't know that aren't familiar, that's actually it ends up oftentimes being a time to witness. Yeah. So you, you mentioned about having a, a team that people could come to as far as a resource and, and refuge. What's your opinion on being visible or, or not visible? I think a lot of it's really the, the situation. Uh, yeah, right. If things are calm and quiet, I think it's good to be kind of in the background, uh, not. You know, you're there, so the people that are familiar with you, they know you're there. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe to somebody that's outside of your outside of your circle, outside of your your parish or your your uh, your church, you know, they're they're not gonna, they maybe not may not notice you, and that can actually be a good thing because if they're up to no good, um, you can pick up probably on them before they're gonna pick up on you. And I think that's a strategic advantage that that anybody should want. Mm -hmm. um, that's you know, at least in my experience. Yeah. Right, but on the on the other side too. I mean, you also have the being visible, right? Being being there. Mm -hmm. That's a deterrent itself. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. We have Absolutely. we have parking we have parking lot security, and many of us have already have, have done that post before, right? And it, it's it's a visible deterrent to people. Mm -hmm. They have a, a security team that's walking around, right? Walking around the the the, the facilities where the children are. I mean, so it, it's 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 a, it's both. I, I think you need to have mm -hmm. both. You yep. Have, yep. Absolutely. You know, so uh, and and mm -hmm. it's just overall. Yeah. The overall picture of the Strike security balance. teams, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's a good balance, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we've all experienced a few situations where there was a lot of cars in the parking lot, but on that particular day, there was not anyone assigned to it. Vehicles tend to get broken into more, but when we're out there, and that that cuts that down, right. it's yeah. almost yeah, unusual. Mm -hmm. Anything one tries to break into a car, anything one when we're there. Uh, I think also having to make sure people that are visible in and and not visible. Mm -hmm. I think that that is great because the, the visible people are the deterrent, but the invisible people uh, allow people who might be might have ulterior motives for being at church. 
they may let their guard down. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's important for every church is to have people there that people are not going to suspect being on the safety team. Because mm -hmm. yeah. right. people let their guard down, they might even start talking to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that is a huge plus. Absolutely, yeah. They, you've got to have a dynamic to the team. There's got to be mm -hmm. all kinds of different individuals who, right. you know, don't necessarily look, you know, okay, you know, they're not like this big. And, you know, everybody thinks, you know, church security, we're all going to be 6'4", you yeah. know, 275 pounds. Yeah. We're not, you know. And, yeah. uh, you know, we all come to different sizes and shapes and uh, um, experiences mm -hmm. and backgrounds. And uh, so that, that, you know, that's absolutely you're dead on the money there. Uh, one thing you have to do, keep in mind, guys, certain state laws, you have to be very careful that you do not come off um, as being a, a police officer or something that says security if you're volunteering, you're not paid by the, by, the, uh, by the property owner. So you have to be very careful what you do and how you present yourselves. Uh, you can wear stuff that's in common that doesn't say security, but lets other people know uh, that you might be part of some kind of team. Uh, earpieces are fine. We use you know just two-way radios with earpieces, uh, so basically we have some good communication. That's that's very important. I, I'd like to talk a little bit about the importance of communication. I hear a lot of guys that like, one or two guys that might take certain spots in the church and they're kind of looking out for this, but they're not coordinated for a fast response if something serious goes down. You guys, just tell them about you know communication, how important it is, and, and you know how we employ that. Well, I think. Um, <clears throat> Well, we, I think for our team, I think the parking lot is probably the most critical. I mean, because if there's going to be something that's going to be a violent action against us, um, it's going to present itself first in the parking lot. Right. Yeah. And so our, our communication with our radios, that guy in that parking lot is going to be able to warn us inside so that we can take the proper measures um, and put ourselves in the best position mm -hmm. Uh, to defend and then go on the offensive and try to ne neutralize whatever threat that is. Um, so for me, the parking lot is absolutely <clears throat> crucial. Mm -hmm. But with communications, I think one of the things with, is you know Tom mentioned the two-way radios, but it's also having your own your own lingo that's going to be it's got to be um, the same, right? You can't have some somebody using these call signs and another person using these call signs. It's got to be uniform. And so then you have to have your keywords, your code words, that you know exactly what that means, right? So if it's a parking lot attack, you have to set up your own system so that we know this is what this is. Or, you know, uh, you know, so you can even keep it simple, like missing child, just keep it simple, Amber Alert, right? Yeah. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to have your own specifics, then you need to have it uniform so that everybody on the team knows exactly what that that is and you're not trying to decipher it when when at the time when you it's a critical time right yeah so, yeah. Absolutely. yeah to the and to that end uh our own policy and i, I would imagine what we would recommend for other churches is that the shift leader for each service check in with his team when he gets when he arrives on campus and so he knows who's there, who's available, what assets he has to work with, and who's positioned where. Yeah. And uh, not only does that help him coordinate with his team, his team now has a good idea of who they can count on, what areas are covered, what areas are vulnerable. Uh, so that, that's also a good thing, is at the start of each service, go ahead and check in with your whole team, make sure everybody's on the same page. You just have a roll call. So really, I, I see there's two different levels of communication. There's when you're actually serving on the post, and then basically from an administrative point of view, whether it's directions for the team or scheduling, uh, using text and email is a great way. But also if there's something suspicious that somebody sees, you can inform the team so everybody knows we're all on the same page, we, we know what the threats are, and, and we're all to communicate. It's very, very important. And then also uh, uh, communication between shifts also. You know, one yeah. shift, the first shift, tell them this shift, you know, hey, um, by the way, during mass, you know, or during service, we had this, you know, and mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. going to be a, an, the, handoff. A, the handoff, absolutely, yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, and checking off in and off the radios, hey, I'm here, I'm going home, um, those are all important things to, mm -hmm. to, to make sure that we do. I know, I know our team is really good at that, and that just comes through practice. If you have the budget to have a police officer on site, mm -hmm. the, it's also important for the, the shift leader and, and everyone on the radio that's going to be interacting to, to let the officer know if there's an incident. And also be listening to the officer because the officer is often outside keeping uh, monitoring the parking lot. But sometimes they're on the other side of the building, and you're seeing something coming in from the parking lot on the other side. Mm -hmm. They 
that communication and how you structure that is going to help that officer in the response time. Mm -hmm. And that, that is critical. And I don't think a lot of people think about that. Mm -hmm. One well, important thing too, as well as with police officers being a part of the team, okay. even if it's just one police officer, they have the full authority of the law. Yeah. So if something serious happens, they can be on site immediately and let them take command and the team can just fall back to crowd control, which is really good because it limits the team's liability and the church's mm -hmm. liability because you have a, a licensed peace officer uh, handling what needs to be done. So it's very important and from a cost perspective, it's even better because now you, you may pay for one police officer, but we're all providing our, our services free to the church. So it's, it's a way to get really good security at a very, very, very low cost because most churches don't have the pocket books to hire a couple police officers for every hour on, on a Sunday. So if you have, especially if you have multiple services. So it's a good way, a nice way the team and the guys can, can really help the church and, and, and a unique way for guys to serve as well is very important. Report running is very important that you want to make sure you guys document. Uh, it can actually help you in court of law if something goes down and you're up in front of a judge. So it's a way to help articulate what the team did and how they responded. So it's really good. It's something that a, a lot of people fail to do. It's one of the, that's one of the most important, the fun things of the job. Just like being in law enforcement, the last thing they do want to do is sit and write a report. But it can actually be one of the most important things that you can do as a team. And make sure it's well documented. Everybody can help contribute, uh, make sure to be very specific with uh, the people that were involved, any witnesses, uh, exactly what you did in detail as an event transpired. It's very important. What do you guys think are some of the good qualities that a, a team member should have? I would say open mind, right, because you got to be willing to learn. you got to know, for somebody like me that uh, is Marine Corps martial arts instructor, I'm still learning. I, you know, when I go to these training classes or refreshers, it's always good to learn some from somebody else something different because um, it's different. It's a different world here, right? It's not the military, the civilian world. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn different techniques. You use maybe the same techniques I use in the military. Mm -hmm. They're different, a different manner, applied in a different manner. So I have to be willing to, to, to learn, to change, right? And same thing, everybody has to just have an open mind and be willing to learn. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't want to just, you know, a bunch of the same type of looking guys. You want to have... Uh, you want to have different, uh, uh, you, you want guys that are approachable. You want some guys that, okay, but he might look a little bit like, hey, you probably don't want to mess with that guy. You want to have those guys as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you want to be approachable, um, but you want to be able to, uh, to turn it on, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, in the event something happens and, and people know that, okay, you know, that we need business if, if we need right. to. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, takes a, it takes a certain kind of person to do that. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not for everybody. But it's it's not for nobody, you know. Um, right. Well said. Well said. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A challenge that other churches have had, uh, we have not had. I think uh, you know, praise be to God. But uh, when you're serving on the team, you need to remember that you are there to serve. Mm -hmm. You're not there to dominate mm -hmm. yeah. the the parishioners. You're not there to throw your weight around. You really need to understand that you are serving the congregation, mm -hmm. and when you keep that in mind, you become a much better servant for your congregation, and thus, you know, a, a servant of God. Absolutely. And you're that you're there to serve your community, and you need to you need people who know that. Mm -hmm. And this is something that's a little different than uh, any other security job, whether it's the bouncer or law enforcement, is that because you have the faith element, if you're rude to somebody that's new or maybe a little suspicious and you turn them off and you offend them, they may never come back to that church again or mm -hmm. even the church in general. So yeah. you're dealing with souls, so it's very important. It's kind of unique. So you really have to be go that extra length to make sure to be as courteous as you can but still do your job efficiently. So it's a very unique balance. But it, again, it, it's very important that you have the right people doing that. And what I was hearing from some of the guys here is that you need a balance of something that's approachable but also is confident and, and knows what they're doing and to handle a tough situation that may arise. Yeah. Uh, what I've noticed is that you need to have somebody that has good people skills, good de-escalation skills. If somebody's upset, how to talk them down. It's time to evangelize, right? We to do, we uh, turn yeah. people away. You yeah. can turn people away yeah. by being too hard. Yeah. But if you're, you know, but you want to be, you still want to be that firm. And this is a person of authority in that 
not authority as in I rule over you, but authority that like, hey, this guy knows, has information that, and I can ask this person for help. Mm -hmm. but, hey, yeah. I need to know where this is. Something simple, hey, where's a bookstore, right? <laughs> it's yeah. right down yeah. around the corner, right? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. or what are the father's hours? Or, or, hey, I need help with this. And you can direct them mm -hmm. to the bulletin or mm -hmm. direct them to the to our information booth, right? That way they, they don't have to, um, you know, wait to if it's not critical, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's kind of where the, I see the usher element of the team coming into play. You know, I, you want to have a smiling face. You want to be welcoming. It's, you know, open the doors for people. Be, be gentlemen, you know. Uh, but there's a time when you when you have to get serious if the need arises. So it's it's having guys that can have turn it on and off and know how to act in, in, a, in a way that's uh, can do the job. So um, hey, well, even here, really, the, the the fire safety thing we've had going on as our congregation has grown, we've had to kind yeah. of step in and tell people, hey, I need I need you to move this way and don't block the fire mm -hmm. lanes. Um, yeah. and as any growing congregation is going to have, you're going to have those oh, those growing pains where people are going to be coming in and out or blocking exits and stuff, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to move, um, mm -hmm. be able to handle those situations in a firm. That, you know, this is not an option. I'm giving you. I need you to come this right, way right, right. Yeah. and mm -hmm. do. And, and so that's been something we've been dealing with here a little bit lately. Oh, yeah, but yeah. but yeah. We, we've handled it the right way, and we really haven't had too many complaints. I don't think. You know, yeah. no, 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 no. I think everyone's yeah. gone really good with that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, what do you think about serving on the team? What was has a has it personally enriched you or maybe taught you something you didn't know before or maybe it's just fellowship with other guys? I think, it, think? I've, uh, I've enjoyed it greatly because first of all, it's good to be around, you know, like-minded individuals. We're all, we're all men of faith and we're all like-minded in the sense that you've probably heard the analogy of the wolf, the sheep, and the sheepdog. It's good to be around other sheepdog-minded individuals. And what did Jesus say? You know, there's there's no greater gift than to lay down your life for your friends. So, mm -hmm. uh, all these guys here, and look, we, we don't get paid for this. We feel it's a calling, and we have made the personal choice to lay down our life. That that's that's what the situation calls for to, to protect our friends and our loved ones, and and, and you know, and the the heavenly worship that that's offered there. So, it's a, it, it is like. Don was saying it's it's a very it's a very important uh, ministry that I almost call it like a ministry that we serve mm -hmm. that we offer to the, the parish. Do any of you guys have ever experience burnout or complacency while serving? I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but, uh, no, I have not yet. No, um, no. maybe just tired. Right, right. Because I sometimes the, the, if you haven't had any issues and it's kind of status quo and and. Some guys, you know, with security work, it, it's a lot of time. It's it's just plain up boring if nothing happened, which is yeah. great. Everybody's safe. We, you we want, go home. My opinion, you want the boring days. You want more of the boring days than the exciting ones. Yeah. Cause yeah. If the days are exciting. That probably means something very bad happened. Yeah. yeah. I, I can almost say, yeah, the guys who would answer yes to that question, they're out here right now. Yeah. <laughs> when I look yeah. up, yeah, I know for me, it starts in the morning. You know, when I get up, and it's like. You know, got my jacket, and I see my radio there, mm -hmm. I see my earpiece there, you know, and it's kind of like, as you start snapping stuff into place, okay, well, I mean, it's, you start coming into that zone, and for me, that's what I love about the team, after leaving the military, I've lost that sense of camaraderie for a lot of years, so, like, when, like by the time I get to the car, I'm, I'm ready to go, right, and I'm just, I'm amped up, I'm, I'm on point, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm alert, and uh, I haven't felt that in a long time, you know, and it's been, uh, it's, it's good to be back kind of in that mentality again. It's, it's right. kind of where I, I felt I was always meant to be anyway. So. If you could tell us a little bit about your background, uh, where you come from, uh, and what drew you to be part of the safety team at the church. Uh, absolutely. Um, joined the military right out of 2001, right here from uh, good old Dallas, Texas. Um, did my basic training, uh, went on to Pensacola, Florida, do my uh, advanced training, and... September 11th happened, and I had the opportunity to, uh, to take orders over, to go overseas, and uh, took the opportunity to do that, and um, definitely forever changed my life. Got a chance to serve my country, to really uh, to do what some people wait lifetimes, you know, a whole entire military careers, and they'll never get a chance to see those sorts of things and to experience that. And I, I got jumped at the opportunity to do it, and uh, um, did two deployments. On my last deployment, unfortunately, I got hurt, and. Uh, when it came time to re-enlist, I knew I physically couldn't do it anymore. So I opted to go ahead and get out, started a family. I was a uh, wandering sheep. Uh, 
was falling away and mm -hmm. wasn't anywhere near God. A VA was trying to treat me for all these disorders and they had me on this medication, that medication, and uh, finally I just said, you know what, I'm gonna, I need to, I need to find God, and so I came back and uh, found the parish, and through that I met our head of security. He heard, hey, you're in the military, and uh, kind of told me what the team was, what, what it was about, and I saw that as an opportunity to to find a purpose again that's a purpose that I I felt that I had lost. I really felt that it was gone forever, and was a real uh, I think one of the main sources of a lot of the depression that I had and so now I get to work with a group of men now and we get to to come in every Sunday and other days and serve and to to, to have that vigilance and to uh, just be part of the team again mm -hmm. and that's that's that was my driving force yeah. for wanting to do this is that a big part of being on the safety team would you say that's something that benefits you and benefits other members of the safety team I think so. Um, I think that people need to have they need they need to know these sorts of things. You know, I spent so much time overseas, and while you know people think of the military as having you know, all these millions of people, and at the end of the day, not very many deploy, and not very many um, get a chance to stand and watch or to be in a combat zone and mm -hmm. and to have to be able to uh, to rely on your instincts and so if I can bestow that knowledge on people to help prevent an attack inside the church I think that's uh, something that I, I can bring to the table and I, I want to pass that knowledge on I, don't know, I think I think that tied that in is our military are the shepherds of our of our freedom and our security and what we do is we're we're this gives you another mm -hmm. uh, another line to go into. Yeah. Is, is that yeah. we're the yeah. shepherds of of the religious community? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if your congregation has any military guys that are there, I mean, uh, um, you know, you want to start a team, go go to them. I mean, I promise you, you're going to have more than a few of them be like, yes, I, I want to yeah. do this because mm -hmm. um, there's so many of us out there that have, uh, you know, there's been uh, sequesters and stuff, and people have been forced out of the military, and they they've lost that sense of belonging. They some mm -hmm. might even feel like, man, you know, I've like my, maybe my country abandoned me. Well, this is a chance for them to, to serve again, you know. And it's been an important part of the closure piece for me, you know. At least in my, my you know, and we both served in the uh, during this this conflict time, you know. And uh, whether you went over there or not, we were prepared to, you know. And uh, I, I think it's uh, I, I think that'd be a good starting point for people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, anything else? Yeah. All right. I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to be here with us today, and hopefully we inspired you guys to get a team started. If you have any questions, just please reach out, leave comments in these videos. Let's get a discussion going. Uh, you can reach me at marshalltacticaldefense at gmail.com. Until next time, stay safe and alert. Good night. Good night. Good night.